thank you for joining me on the Secret Place Ministries today. You know, I'm so thankful to be here. I was just talking to my friend Donette about this is my 15th show. Do you know how glad I am that I follow God's instructions? You know, I'm going to talk to you about uh, pray for instructions. You know, I prayed for instructions for over, I don't know, 10 years ago about what the Lord wanted to do with me. And at that time, my husband, of course, was at my side. But, you know, God still had instructions and he doesn't forget and he doesn't give up on what he has planned for your life. And so when he gives you instructions, it's up to you to carry them out. And so, yeah, I'm so excited that today is uh, the 15th time I've been on air today and air with Secret Place Ministries at WTJR, and I'm just so thankful. So I'm talking about praying for instructions. You know, our inward development is so, so much more important than our outward appearance. And what, what I'm talking about is prayer. You know, how God develops us inside is so much more important to God than what people see on the outside. God looks at the heart, but man looks out the, at the auto appearance. You know, and what people may see or what they may think about you is not what God thinks about you. When I think about how we follow God's instructions, I think about when Jesus was on the water with Peter, and that's in Matthew 14, 22 and 23. He said right away, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and start back across the lake. But he stayed until he had sent until he had sent the crowds away. Then he went up on a mountain where he could be alone and to pray. You know, when I said something about Peter earlier, I thought about when Jesus told Peter to walk out on the water and he followed Jesus instructions. It wasn't until he took his eyes off of Jesus that he began to sink. When we take our eyes off of God and when we don't do what he tells us to do and not follow the instructions is when we begin to fail. It's when we begin to sink. It's when we begin to doubt the plan of God. We have to follow his instructions. And how do we get those instructions? In prayer. We get those instructions hearing from God. Even Jesus prayed for his next instructions from the Father. After the crowd had left, after they had went out to eat or whatever they did, you know, after they went down the trail or whatever they decided to do, Jesus has already made up his mind he was going to pray because he needed his next assignment in God. He needed his next assignment from his father. He said, told his father, you know, whatever you see the father do, I'm going to do. So whatever instruction God gives you, that's what you need to do. Hallelujah. Don't veer away from what the Lord is saying. Praying and hearing God is important before we move on an impulse. We will move in impulse or in our own will if we don't understand the instructions in prayer. And when you're in prayer, sometimes you need to have a pencil and paper right beside you. You know, sometimes you need to record it, you know, uh, on what God is saying. You know, he's speaking to you in one ear. You're recording and have your recorder in your hand and saying exactly what God is saying. Or you're writing down exactly what he's saying. He's not giving you instructions for anything because he knows everything. He knows the end to the beginning, from the beginning to the end. He knows exactly what's going to happen in your life. He, know, he knows by minute by minute, day by day. Follow the instructions of God in prayer. He'll never leave you. He'll never uh, stray you off to a path. He'll never take you to a dark place that you don't even know about. He wants to give you instruction, but we gotta follow it. The first step to becoming different is your exposure to the power of God. Prayer and obeying God gives you that exposure. When we expose ourselves to the presence of the Holy Ghost, prayer will give us the power. That's our first thing in change. What makes you different is because you follow the instructions of God, no matter which way the crowd is going. If God says go left, you need to go left. If he says go right, then go right. And you know, he can change his mind at any time. It it's, doesn't have to be written in stone what the Lord says. To the more you stay in the presence of God and around the people of God, 
the more you will grow in the things of God. You know, some people, uh, we're in a time right now where some people think they don't have to go to church. They don't need a pastor. They don't need to hear the gospel. I can stay home and have church. I can stay home and do, do what I need to do. Yes, you can. But if the only voice that you're listening to is your voice, then you can possibly be going down the right path because Jesus is the one that gives us our instructions. You know, again, it says you will grow in the things of God the more you want to and the more you stay in the presence. Prayer creates a hunger for God. You know, like I said at another show, the more I pray, the more I want to pray. The more I worship, the more I want to worship. You know, to get something different, sometimes you have to do something different. If you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, somebody uh, defined that as insanity. They define that as, as the same results. We have to do something different to get something different, you know, from God. And so you can only level up to what you are exposed to. You know, I love being around someone that is a prayer or, or a prophet or a preacher or a mother of God, even a woman of God, you know, I can glean from those things. Somebody that is always speaking love. You know, I have a, a uh, mother, her name is Mother Rita. She is a mother, a giant in the spirit. You know, she is a great woman of God and she is always exuding love. She's always talking about love. She's always uh, either loving on you or loving on someone else. And you know, while I'm around her, that spirit of love begins to rub off on me. And so I love being around her. But then I begin to think, Lord, what instructions do you have for me for love? And I begin to use those things. I begin to show people love because that's what Jesus wants us to do. Peter could not walk on the water until he was exposed to the power of Jesus Christ. And Jesus told him to come and Peter followed his instructions. I just wanted to say that one more time. Peter followed God's instructions. He followed Jesus' instructions. When he walked out on that water, hallelujah, he was weightless. He was limitless. He knew that he was making it over there where Jesus was. It did not stop. He did not fail until he took his eyes off of Jesus. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Don't stop praying. Don't stop hearing his instructions. Know where God is. You know, sometimes I walk in Walmart, but before I walk in that door, I ask the Lord, is this where you want me to go? Is this the time that I should be here? You know, there's a lot happening in the world and I always want to hear from the Holy Spirit. I always want to know that I'm in the right place at the right time. And you might say that's just a little bitty thing, but it could mean life or death. It could mean you being in a situation that you don't want to be in. Know that God has already gave you instructions. If you take time to pray, God's going to give you instructions. Experience creates exposure, which creates manifestation in your life. Hallelujah. God will begin to manifest things in your life that will help you along the way. Exposure equals knowledge and wisdom and the ways of God. The wisdom and the ways of God is what we are all wanting to have today. You know, we cannot make it unless we have the wisdom of God. And how do you get that? Pick up your word of God. If you're reading Psalms, if you're reading Proverbs, you can read all through the word of God and get wisdom. I love to read the, the Proverbs every single day because it is a book of wisdom. You know, I just want to give you a little instructions. If you don't know where to start to read your Bible, pick up the word of God and turn to your Proverbs. It's always going to give you wisdom. And then I pray Proverbs. I pray Psalms because in those books, the Lord always has something to say about our life. Do you know that the Bible is relevant uh, to what's going on today? And God will put the instructions inside of you also to go with the word of God. Hallelujah. In prayer, you can enter the realm of miracles just like Jesus did. Jesus' story should be your life story. The story of Jesus should also be your life story. The Bible said that we will do uh, above what Jesus did. We will do miracles. We will walk on water if that's what God desires us to do. Hallelujah. But sometimes it just means to love our neighbor. Sometimes it needs to, it means to go through our neighborhood and witness. Hallelujah. Or bring someone that came in our neighborhood, you know, a, um, a plate of cookies, whatever that you do, you know, it is uh, from God. You know, I had a neighbor that moved in, um, 
you know, in my neighborhood, and I just rode by. I didn't have time. I think it was, it was getting dark, and I didn't have time at that point in time to stop and visit with her, but I said, welcome to the neighborhood. And then later, when I could go up and visit with her, I went and visited with her, and she said, do you know when you said welcome to the neighborhood, that made me feel so good. She said, I didn't, I'm living by myself now. I've never lived in a house, a full house by myself. And so I was a little leery. And so I came in and uh, sat down and talked with her and just welcomed her to the neighborhood. She was so happy. Do you know the little things that God gives us to do? We may think they're, they're nothing, but on a scale with God, they're everything. When we're in prayer, God will give you instructions on how to love someone and even how to just welcome them to the neighborhood. Just show them a little love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when we follow the instruction, it pleases God. Prayer keeps you updated on what the Holy Spirit is doing and speaking in your life. Prayer also keeps you updated on what is going on in the world. You know, there's some things going on. We, you know, some people are calling it war and it does look like war. It actually feels like war. You know, God will keep you updated. He will download things inside of you that you did not know. The Bible says that, uh, that if you come to me, that I will show you great and mighty things that you didn't even know about. You know, God can put something inside of you that was buried, maybe when you were in school, maybe when you were in college and you didn't feel like it was revelant. It's revelant to God. He will bring that back up to you in prayer. He will give you instructions, hallelujah. Do you know that some people don't even go to school, uh, to college or whatever, and they're doing miraculous things for the Lord. And if you can just reach out to God and ask God, Lord, what is my instructions today? What do you want me to pray? Every day I ask God, Lord, what are you doing? How are you going to do it? And how can I help you? How can I be a co-laborer with you? How can I get in the fight with you? How can I get in this victory with you? What do you want me to do? Prayer helps you with your instructions. Father, I pray that you teach me to follow your instructions. That's my prayer for you today, that God will teach you how to follow his instructions. We are never too old to learn. Hallelujah. We're never too young to learn. We, if you follow God, he's always going to show you something new. Hallelujah. God will expose you to the power and the plan. He will even give you experience that you didn't know you had. He will even give you wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah on things, how to create things, hallelujah, in your life. We need to level up and God will create a hunger inside of you. Once God sees that he can trust you, once God sees that you're faithful, hallelujah, with the little things, he will begin to make the plan bigger and bigger. Don't set yourself out. Don't, don't set yourself aside. Don't count yourself out that you will not be able to follow the plan of God. God will show you exactly what you need to do. You know, they used to say it's women's intuition. I say it's the Holy Ghost intuition that God, the Holy Ghost is always speaking. Hallelujah. That the Godhead is always active in your life. And I pray right now that you will follow the instructions of God. And so he will make your plan bigger. Amen.